Hello! A few months ago, when I published the first video about the tethered flying machine, someone named Sharpfang showed me their concepts that worked in a kind of similar way. And it was a linear stepper motor. I will link to the video that I was shown uh, where I got this idea from, so this is absolutely not my idea. Uh, but I've been experimenting with this recently, and I just wanted to share what I found out and uh, some uh, new developments I've done on the same concept. Because I don't think I haven't seen any new information about these kinds of machine. So this is a linear stepper motor. Uh, you click here and here, and we can see that something similar to a flying machine-ish thing moves in this direction. And if we want to move in the other direction, we just click this one first, and that one first, and this one first, and that one first, and this one first, and that one first. So this could be used as a replacement for the tethered flying machine. Now, of course, you don't want to click like that because that's a waste of time. So you just need to delay the signal a little bit to both sides. And now we can move in that direction when I click here and this direction when I click here. Very simple. There is an interesting thing about this machine, which makes it work pretty much like the tethered flying machine. And it is that when it runs out of its, uh, well, tether, it becomes separated here and starts moving in the other direction. It becomes quite obvious when you think about how it works, and it works in both directions. So it could be used as a replacement for the tethered flying machine with a clock, and it would work pretty much exactly the same. You would just have to send the signals correctly, but this doesn't seem to be a big deal. One thing we can do with this is that we can have just a single switch, and we can control the direction in which the stepper motor goes, by clicking here. So that works too. And this is of course not the only possible configuration of the bars that are moving. We can do something like this as well. I, I didn't add the complicated buttons here, but it should be clear how this works. So this works too. But can we use this for anything other than harvesting, well, I guess sugarcane and bamboo? Well, I'm not exactly sure. This, by the way, can be extended if you use instant wire to power these things. I just didn't do it because I'm really bad at instant wires. Actually, I'm, I've never built one that worked properly other than for my tunnel bore. But, uh, well, one way you can use this is uh, a selector switch to select something. I guess that's the best application I have found can now see that we are powering different blocks. That should be very obvious. There is a problem here if you want to attach something like a flying machine component. And this is the same thing for the tethered flying machine, by the way. It's not exactly trivial. N naively, you would think that you could do just something like this. Add a piston here, observer here, and a block here. And at first experiment, it looks like, oh, it works. But it doesn't really work because this doesn't actually do anything because we, if we just reach push limits or close to push limits we can see what's happening here we can move in that direction uh, when we switch sides it already broke but if we build it next to this and try to move in that direction well we don't move and we're stuck so that doesn't work. The only way I have found that we can glue a something that resembles a flying machine segment is if we do this. This will work, kind of. Uh, let me think if I did it correctly. Yes, I did. So now we can be pulling some part of a flying machine here. Unfortunately, it cannot be particularly big because we can't repeat this trick unless we add more components just here. We can't really repeat this trick for many more segments. So this works. And the same thing, of course, works on this one, even when it switches sides. So we would be adding a piston here and it's moving in this direction. So I think, yes, this is the correct configuration. And we switch directions, and now we're moving in that 
direction and we're pulling some segment of something that would could be a part of a flying machine here but it's not very extendable it is probably possible to treat this a little bit more like a normal flying machine if you get all the bits of it to run into a wall to compact them before you stopped moving them at well this point somewhere i haven't really experimented with that the horizontal ones well I haven't really found any practical use for them other than a replacement for the tethered flying machine. But I've been experimenting with vertical ones. Can we do a stepper motor like this for a vertical thing? Because I had an idea how to use this in a farm. Uh, and by the way, that idea didn't pan out. So that's why I'm publishing this video with this information rather than a farm that uses this because, well, it didn't really work. And it, yeah, this doesn't fit my needs. So naively, we can start with something like this, right? Maybe should be able to work because it's kind of hard to send the signal vertically, but maybe this will work. Yeah, it doesn't because quasi connectivity. First we power this piston, but then the piston keeps being powered by this thing here. And yeah, that doesn't work. And in this direction, it's even worse. Quasi-connectivity powers this piston, it doesn't get updated, and it's just stuck in this state. So this doesn't work. Well, second attempt. Will this work? Uh, not really. So my next attempt was something like this. And, well, this almost works. You can see what's going on here. Uh, the piston, the, there is a piston down here, or rather a sticky piston. It will be pushing up this tower of slime blocks up. Then the observers will be powering the glazed terracotta here. This block of redstone will power this piston, etc, etc, etc. The problem with this one is that we need to pulse it twice. Because, as you can see, nothing happened on this pulse, and now they got powered. So both sides would have to be powered twice. We could extend the signal that is going into the sticky piston, but the signal would have to get longer and longer and longer for every segment that we add so we can give things time to settle before we depower them. So this doesn't really work either. Then I was thinking about something like this. What's happening here is that the top observer will power this block of glazed terracotta which will then power this piston and push the whole thing down, which should give us just one pulse from the observers, because we don't want two pulses from the observers, we just want one. And this looks promising. Right? So, can we power things with this? Let's add a note block. That looks very promising. Can we power a repeater? It blinks, therefore it must work, right? Uh, well, not really. For some magical reason, because of some block update ordering or however it works, I have no idea how it would work, this does not power pistons. It powers pretty much everything else, even redstone lamps. That works. Just not pistons or sticky pistons for that matter. So the best I could come up with is something like this. Now we can power pistons through this thing. It becomes ridiculously massive, but it does work. So this is the vertical stepper engine. Can move down. And we can move up. This is limited to push limit for the observers, so 12 blocks up. And by the way, it should be possible to power an arbitrarily high column of observers like this by building something like this. There needs to be a solid block on this side of the wall, but then this wall will power, well, pretty much from build height to the bottom of the bedrock. Uh, the problem was that I, for my purposes, I needed the mechanism to be powered from below and not from above. And this only works from above, as far as I know. So this would work to power a thing like this from above, but my particular application needed 
control from below and I wasn't too bothered with the height limit of 12 blocks. So now we have something like this. The problem is that it's even harder to connect a flying machine component to this thing. I guess it could be done exactly the same way as with the other one. And let me think, yes, this should be... So that does work, but there is even less stuff we can connect to this because, well, this probably needs to be slime and we can, because it would get stuck to the honey. And yeah, a few blocks can be added here, but not particularly much. So I don't really have that many applications for this. I just think it's a very neat mechanism and maybe, maybe someone will find it useful. The only application I have found for this that, well, wasn't part of the farm I was designing where this didn't actually work out, well, uh, I, I guess you can crush your friends. Very, very slowly. That's it for this showcase of an interesting mechanism that I think might actually be useless for everything I was planning to use it for but maybe you'll find a good use for this. If you do, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, ask them in comments as well, and I try to answer anything I understand. But until then, thanks for watching, and have a good crushing. Bye!